We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good morning from Buenos Aires, Argentina for me. Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining with us in this National and Regional Initiatives main session called The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly of the Internet Times uh, in Times of Crisis. My name is Olga Cavalli. I am from Argentina, and I will co-moderate this session with our dear friend San Sandra Hoferrichter from Germany. I want to thank the Polish government for organizing this such an interesting session, I, an event. I'm, I'm so sad that I cannot be with you. We were planning to travel, but finally we decided not to. But I see the venue and I see our friends there and I really miss you all. So uh, what, is, what is this session about? The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted almost all spheres of life. It is just one in addition of many crises humanity has faced. Certainly, the impact differs from country to country. This session will bring perspectives from communities gathered around the national, regional, and youth IGF processes called the NRIs on roles the Internet has in times of crisis. Delegated representatives of the different NRIs will provide concrete cases of existing practices, challenges, and already implemented or under implementation actions plans and activities in areas agreed by the NRIs. The session will illustrate existing challenges across developed and developing countries, as well as vulnerable groups through concrete cases of practices. Sandra, over to you. Thank you, Olga. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening um, to the NRI world. And greetings from Leipzig, Germany, which is actually only 500 kilometers away from you. But the situation with the COVID pandemic in my region is so bad that I decided not to come because uh, you might not get a bed in hospital once you're back and have something. Um, this session uh, preparation already started uh, a while ago. I would say like three or four months uh, NRIs are meeting regularly uh, under the coordination of our dear friend Anya, and um, we are around 135 NRIs that uh, develop the session in a bottom-up manner. And uh, we also assigned uh, rapporteurs, which are uh, Judith Hellestein from the IGF USA, uh, which is Muriel Alpani from Benin IGF, and Ali Hussein. Um, I don't have um, affiliation to uh, I don't know from which country or IGF he's, he's coming from. So apologies, maybe Hussein uh, can uh, clarify that later on. Those rapporteurs will be given the opportunity at the end of the session to wrap up our findings. And um, it became clear over the past month that the pandemic and uh, the internet in the times of crisis is definitely uh, one of the hot topics in across the world in all NRIs and it was a topic of a session in, in any uh, national and regional IGF that took place over the year. Olga, I give back to you uh, to walk us through the session rules. Yes, thank you very much, Sandra. The good thing that I'm in Argentina is that we have summertime here. It's one advantage of, of staying at home. So the session rules, this is very important because we have many speakers and we have many NRIs that, that will be willing to participate actively in this session. So the session will be in, or hosted in an open format. There will be no pre-assigned speaking slots. So all the NRIs will be invited to carefully follow the discussion and raise hands for an intervention of up to two minutes, 120 seconds. Keep that in mind. NRI representatives and colleagues attending the session can share feedback via the chat. And once the floor will be open, you can make reference in the chat for a queue for a question a C for comment or raise hand when you want to, um, to, to uh, talk live. So uh, the session will focus, as, as I have mentioned in the name of this uh, main session, will focus on the internet in times of crisis, lessons learned and policy imperatives for enhancing access, resiliency and inclusion. 
with three focus. The good, for example, uh, bringing opportunities, telework, e-commerce, e-education. The bad, reliance on platforms, cyber harms, bad coverage of services, and the ugly, human rights violations, hate speech, and misinformation, for example. And then we have some time for uh, talking about the way forward. So the comments about good, bad, and the ugly are for NRIs only. Keep that in mind. And the point four is for the whole community participating. And speakers have to provide a brief, brief and concrete uh, opinion about what they are talking about. And um, as I said, NRIs will take the floor rising hand. Sandra, over to you. Thank you, Olga. And uh, we will be starting with the first uh, policy question. And uh, we would like to start in a positive manner and would like to invite all speakers from the NRI. I have a list here of those who are assigned speakers from the NRI. And I ask uh, colleague Anya to, to help us cross-checking those lists um, to uh, let us know what you found to be one of the good thing of the internet in the time of a crisis. And I repeat what Olga just said, if you have a question, put a Q in the chat, and then your question, if you have a comment that you would like to, uh, to have read out loud, make a C in front, and if you would like to speak, then please raise your hand. And I see one hand is raised, which is Oswaldo. Oswaldo I know your hand has raised since the beginning. Is that an old hand or would you like to speak on the point of the good? Yes, yes, please. Olga, <coughs> Oswaldo, then the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, concerning the first uh, policy question, uh, in Dominican Republic, we had a, a great experience. Uh, the good thing about internet was uh, the great opportunity that it created to continue business, uh, not as usual, but in a new way, uh, allowing people to connect and to uh, businesses to offer their products and services. For instance, the supermarket uh, were reluctant to to provide services via internet, via e-commerce, and they uh, quickly develop applications for people to uh, interact and ask for their uh, their deliveries or their takeoff. No, uh, this go they this gave a, a great opportunity for the uh, arousal of new the increase uh, an increasing. Uh, uh, services on delivery uh, in all sense. But in the other part, uh, education uh, was uh, one asset. I, as a teacher at a local university in tech on subjects of cybersecurity, uh, we continue delivering uh, classes online to all different uh, students. Not always it was so, so easy because some of them needed to create their connections because uh, in the campus, internet is for free, but when they're from home, they had to, to improve. So ISPs, ISPs created opportunity for students and for teachers to continue uh, contracting services in an uh, affordable way in order to create uh, opportunities to connect. Um, uh, for uh, as internet society, we uh, got we uh, took the opportunity to develop an internet exchange point in order to strengthen the connections inside our country, uh, and that improved the opportunities to to uh, bring content uh, in a, in a way. Uh, efficient for everyone. So I see a, a good result in our country using internet during pandemia, which increased the digital environment. Not, uh, uh, finally, it is important to mention that the government created a, a, 
a digital transformation initiative uh, focusing on adopting a multi-stakeholder approach in order to create the digital agenda uh, with the multiple stakeholders, which created an action plan that is in the process of budgeting and, uh, and a broadband commission in order to uh, interconnect the unconnected. Uh, that were affected during the pandemic because of their, uh, the last miles uh, lacks that were affected. Thank you. Thank you, Osvaldo. Um, I really ask you to stick to the time and actually we were supposed to have a timer in our Zoom room. Uh, maybe this can be installed later on. But we have a queue of operation now. I have on my list Laura, Rodney, Andres, Jennifer. So next is Laura Palakiois. Um, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrongly. Olga, please introduce yourself and the NRI uh, from which you are coming from, on which behalf you are speaking. Laura, can you hear us? Buenos días. Eh, siendo parte del stakeholder de la Academia y en representación del Foro Colombiano de Gobernanza de Internet. Hello. I represent the Colombian Forum of Internet Governance. I also represent students from different Colombian universities as well as universities based in Cuba. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Internet in Colombia had an important impact on the entire economic situation. Osvaldo has mentioned it already. Many stores uh, had to be closed so they moved their operation online. And over the past year, the e-commerce increased by over 40%. And at the same time, one has to say that the shift of operation um, toward online operation had both positive and negative impacts on the society, both regional as well as national impact, that is. In some areas of Colombia, this high internet traffic resulted in connectivity issues because the system was overloaded. That might have uh, generated some level of distrust amongst the users. However, during the COVID-19 pandemic, what we also observed was how important it was to respect human rights both offline and online. In our country during the pandemic, our government introduced a lot of different solutions. And some of those initiatives also generated some concern in selected sectors of the society. Some people seem to be worried that their rights would be infringed. On some platforms, what was evident was that the internet comes with a number of weaknesses. Speaking of the personal data protection, one can say that not always all digital platforms uh, respect human rights and safeguard human rights. Thank you very much. Be because I would really like that we focus on the good for the moment and uh, you refer already to the not so good things. So please leave that for the second part and then we give a chance uh, for others to speak firstly on the good only. And uh, um, in the chat, the question was asked if we can have the, the timer up. That would be great. Please, everyone, stick to two minutes so that we can give everyone a chance to speak. Um, the next is uh, Rodney. And then we have more people who raised hand, which is Emmanuel and Mohamed. Um, Rodney, the floor is yours. Two minutes on the good impact of the internet, please. And introduce you. yourself. Thank you very much. I'm Rodney Taylor. I'll be less than two minutes. Uh, Rodney Taylor, the Secretary General of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. And we host uh, annually now for the 17th year, the Caribbean Internet Governance Forum. Uh, it's a regional intergovernmental organization. 
And so a lot of the perspectives will come from the government point of view, but we do host a multi-stakeholder forum. In terms of what has been good is that the internet allowed us to work remotely here in the Caribbean. Uh, it allowed for online learning and for so some aspects of social interaction. It seems almost as if this is what the internet was built to do. To, it was built for the pandemic to allow us to continue to function, to operate, to provide services. And what it has done from a public service or from a government point of view, it has accelerated uh, some, say, as much as seven or 10 years, the move towards digital transformation. So a lot of governments had to overnight stand up uh, public services to allow uh, the country to still function. It has, uh, for many economies that were dependent upon tourism, it allowed for the safe uh, continuation of that uh, industry uh, by way of advanced notification of uh, COVID status, uh, allowed for quarantining within certain facilities and so on. And this was facilitated, of course, by the internet and by digital transformation uh, initiatives. So um, we see that the internet was, in fact, resilient and up to the task. And that is part of the good, and I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rodney, also for keeping the time and the topic. Next is Andres. Hello. Yes, thank you for inviting me here. And uh, I'm uh, from the Estonian Internet Foundation, and we are the country uh, top-level domain uh, holder. And also uh, dealing with Internet Day, I mean, we are holding the event. And... Uh, Yes, about the positive thing about I'm, I'm bringing along a, a very specific example of the Internet Day in Estonia. Uh, the thing is that uh, we we did it last spring about the seventh time, and it was most popular because of really that let's say uh, uh, result not for the very good era. I mean the COVID era, and why it was positive because. We were involved, uh, I mean, our stream was channeled through the biggest Estonian online portal and our auditorium expanded very much there. And uh, we didn't also uh, take uh, this usual, let's say, hybrid format along, I mean, uh, to put up only that or only Zoom and to risk with very low quality or whatever. But we were in actually at the studio uh, dealing with professionals and uh, it was then a good way to go. And we are uh, for sure proceeding at the same way. And uh, for example, I just wanted to bring along a very uh, short audio uh, edit uh, of yesterday, of not yesterday's, but on Wednesday's the main session. And at the end, there was some kind of comment. If you hear it, I hope. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I had to. You are the best guys. Thank you very much. You spoiled the main discussion. Why I wanted to share it is because we all are humans and it happens also uh, for the professional. And uh, despite that, we need to give it uh, hope and a second try. And we are good to go with uh, uh, broadcast events in the future. And we really believe the positive aspects of, of this digital era. That's mm -hmm. all by me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andres. Um, I closed the queue already uh, for all those who have raised the hand right now, and I read out the names. So next is Jennifer, then Emanuela, Mohamed, Nena, Eileen, Nirisha, Platina, Abdel, Marcel, and the last one just raised the hand. So, okay, this is this is deleted again. Okay, so those will speak on the good and I really, really ask you to stick to the time because otherwise we are running out of time. So Jennifer is next. Jennifer, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Sandra. Um, this is Jennifer Chung from the Secretariat team of the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. I'm joining you from, mm -hmm. I guess, the, yes, the venue at, in Poland. So I'll keep to the time and be very brief. Uh, for the Asia Pacific region, we were hit, of course, as everybody in the world really, really hard uh, by the COVID pandemic. But the good part is that 
uh, each education was on the agendas of many, many different states in Asia Pacific, and services provided were responsive to community needs. There were e-government services, e-education services, and the emphasis was placed on net safety, especially for children and youth. So information services were offered in collaboration with the education system uh, do place emphasis on developing skills on critical assessment of online information, which is extremely important with all the misinformation, disinformation, and fake news going around right now. So some case studies uh, for Nepal, uh, the participants in the APRHGF noted the positive outcomes in the number of programs and initiatives by the Ministry of Education through its ICT master plan and this was done through the public and community libraries and promoted digital literacy. In programs in Singapore and also Australia, even though they are, of course, um, diametrically in opposite to a lot of the um, developing countries in Asia Pacific, despite the great differences, they all reveal an acute awareness of community needs and effective action is being taken in public and private partnerships. In Central Asia, we also heard from e-education case studies from Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan, and this is especially to deliver e-education to children and youth in remote and rural communities. These are underserved communities, and some of the solutions looked at actually delivering educational materials in local languages through offline digital libraries. So a lot of capacity building and a lot of training uh, came from very innovative solutions that were created during this period. So these are the good things that I wanted to share. Back to you, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Um, Emanuela, uh, what is up in Italy? Yes, hi, I'm Emanuela Girardi. I'm uh, from the member of the program committee of IGF Italy and I'm the secretary of IGF Italy. So we had a few good things actually that we discussed in the IGF Italy and that have been developed in the last years, especially during the pandemic. Uh, I want to highlight three points. The first one is um, re related to the acceleration of the digitalization that we had in Italy, especially because we were starting from a, probably a not such a good situation, especially from digital skills. And we could see this especially in the SMEs uptake of the uh, internet services and in the citizens. So for the SMEs, this was very important, especially for the IGF Italy, because uh, the host organization was the Chamber of Commerce of Cosenza, a city in the south of Italy. And they were particularly successful in reaching out to SMEs, to small and medium-sized companies, and to engaging them in the discussion and showing them the great opportunities of the internet for their business. And if we go instead to see the, the citizens, what happened, especially during the pandemic, is that the digital identity in Italy boosted, and we had they presented the, the last data in the IGF Italy a few weeks ago. We went from 5 million digital identities, which is called speed in Italy, to 26 million on a population of about 60 million. And we have about 6 million people who use it on a monthly basis. So this is, a, it was really a success during the acceleration of a digitalization and the usage of, usage of digital services during the pandemic. And the last point was that we were able to develop uh, some uh, training services online and uh, with the IGF Italy and with the Chamber of Commerce in Cosenza, we developed this online training for students, for 500,000 students, and this is an online training specially based on the Data, data sharing, uh, my time, to, um, to, bring, to bring awareness on data sharing and data awareness. So these were the three main points of the good use of internet uh, in Italy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emanuela. Then uh, the next is Mohamed. And please, yes. everyone, lower your hand if you have spoken already. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. And uh, let me first, on behalf of my members of North Africa, if you extend my sincere greeting to all of you. And also, I would like to mention that the, uh, in the first, the North Africa IGF has dedicated uh, the past two forums, uh, 2020 and 2021, to discuss the policy questions that proposed to be discussed today. Uh, the good thing is happening in, in the region uh, under the COVID-19, uh, the North uh, Africa region, which is, uh, as other regions are uh, switching uh, to uh, learning and education, for instance, in Egypt, the Minister of Education, 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 the Minister of
as a preventive measures taken to encounter uh, uh, outbreak of COVID-19 uh, and the, the Ministry uh, uh, of Education has established uh, uh, different platforms, education platforms, and the, the, the children has access to, to, to this platform and they continue the uh, learning. And also, the other thing is uh, it's good happened during uh, the COVID-19 uh, in terms of the e-commerce, because the commerce in, in, the, in North Africa is not, the rate of the e-commerce in, in North Africa is not high, but uh, because the situation of the COVID-19, the, the citizens in North Africa started to, to, to rely on the, the different platforms for, to buy and seeing uh, things and stuff. And uh, the, I think one of the, the most important impact for that in, in the region that uh, now the, 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 the different citizens from the different countries in the region now has become a, a trust and confidence in the e-commerce transaction. And I think this is to, to raise the rate of uh, e-commerce transaction in the region. I can stop here in, in this issue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And I realize in the chat a long message from Tracy Hexhoff from Trinidad and Tobago, also on the good. And I encourage our reporters to also take into consideration this message. And I assume that the chat will be somehow be part of uh, the messages in general. The next is Nena. Nena, I understand, is in the room in Katowice. Nena, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much. My name is Nenna. I come from the internet. I'd wanted to share one lesson that was inspired by the NRI sessions. I'm a member of the organizing committee of the UN Data Forum. And so last year, the Data Forum held online because of the COVID. But this year, it held effectively on the ground in Zurich in Switzerland. So while we were planning that session for this year, I told them we have the IGF and you can learn a good lesson from the NRIs, which is the organization of hubs. And we debated it back and forth and finally they said, let's give it a try. And so if you go to undataforum.org, you are going to see local meetups. And finally this year we had over 21 local meetups. We used the draft ANYA. You recall we did a draft as NRIs on holding uh, local, uh, hubs. So these have been taken, these have been adopted by the, the organizing committee, the program committee of the UN Data Forum, and we rolled it out this year, and I'm here to say congratulations, that's a good one. Thank you very much, Nena. And I would like to mention again that the queue for uh, the first policy question on the good was already closed. Uh, the next is Eileen, and you will see the names that are in this first round uh, further up in the chat. So, Eileen, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much for giving me the floor, moderators. I am Eileen Sejas. I'm part of the program committee of the Youth IGF Argentina. Today, I can share with you a positive aspect that Internet has brought us as youth, not only in Argentina, but, but around the world. We were able to use the digital space to create fantastic capacity building activities for other young people and collaborate with other NRIs. For example, by presenting, uh, presenting our conclusions of the Youth Lack IGF at the Lack IGF meeting, which we think it is a great way to create bridges between the youth NRIs and the NRIs youth at heart. Hence, NRIs youth at heart should work in solidarity and not see the youth NRIs as a competition, but as a bridge to bring young voices into the ecosystem. At the Youth IGF Argentina, for our annual meeting, we were able to conduct webinars for young people from all regions of Argentina, and we also had the participation of young colleagues from the LAC region. In this way, the internet became an inclusive space to discuss not only youth participation, but also other topics in which youth is interested. It is important to remark that generational change and exchange is always needed, and we call upon all the NRIs youth at heart to create meaningful bridges with the youth NRIs. Finally, we want to highlight that the most important lesson that we learned from the pandemic is that we shouldn't hesitate to co collaborate and seek help 
in the spirit of solidarity, much more can be achieved together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Eileen. Next is uh, Nazam. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Nazar Nicholas uh, Kirama, and uh, I am from Tanzania uh, IGF. And uh, I would uh, talk about only uh, three things that uh, are good, that are, can be read from uh, Tanzania. And the pandemic uh, brought a lot of uh, innovation into our local uh, uh, ecosystem. For example, uh, uh, local universities and uh, colleges uh, designed uh, platforms uh, for learning, uh, the so-called e-learning platforms, and those were very useful to them during the pandemic. Number two, uh, the, w there has been a lot uh, of digitization of uh, government services. Uh, for example, uh, government uh, um, uh, actually now is uh, is uh, uh, you can you can go and test for COVID-19 and they can uh, email your 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 results without ever going to the uh, to the health center. And number three, uh, it's uh, a reduced government uh, budget for physical meetings. Uh, there was a huge budget in our government uh, to hold meetings, uh, workshops, and seminars, and, and conferences. But uh, through Zoom, uh, uh, you know, all of these meetings were, cancel were canceled because of the uh, pandemic. And uh, thereby, the government was able to save a lot of money. And this money was uh, uh, channeled to other uh, government services like education and and health, uh, and so on and so forth. So basically, uh, the government also was able to uh, craft the digital Tanzania strategy 20, uh, 20 to 2025, uh, which is actually digitizing all government services uh, uh, to deliver. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nazar. And then we have Platina. Plantina, where you are coming from? Hi, colleagues. My name is Plantina Mukoni. I am the Secretariat of the South African Internet Governance Forum. And just to make a point on the comment of the good that has come out of um, uh, COVID-19 with regards to uh, internet is that we have seen an acceleration of uh, the digitization of schools, especially schools or learning in rural and marginalized communities. That has seen um, even more learners and students from rural and marginalized communities coming into the South African School of Internet Governance, learners from the Eastern Cape, learners from Port Elizabeth, and also participating in internet governance um, platforms. Platform. So that is one of the goods um, that I would like to highlight. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was brief and precise. Thank you for, for being so focused. Abdel Jalil is still on my list, but I don't see his hand up anymore. Abdel Jalil, do you still want to speak? Yeah, hi. Uh, bonsoir à tout le monde. I will speak in French. Uh, that's a diversity of uh, NRIC also. So, je m'appelle Abdejelil Bashar Bong, je suis le secrétaire exécutif de... My name is Al Bashar Bang, I am the secretary of our local IGF. And I have to tell you that my experience, our experience is quite positive. We can see some clear positive results of the pandemic, including um, the digitiz digitization of services and a growing number of internet users in our country. We can see that especially young people are more open and they are starting to use the internet, for example, in order to so to sell products and services online. So there has been a, um, an increase in terms of e 
commerce. E-learning has developed, and we can also see that schools are adapting to the new circumstances. Uh, there are, for example, student groups established on applications such as WhatsApp. So in general terms, we can say that the government has, already, uh, has also started the process of digitizing all the public services. You can now pay your taxes online. You can establish businesses online. So these are the positive results of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we're happy to see them. Thank you very much, Abdel Jalil. And the last speaker on the topic of the good is Marcel Kumenauer. He is my colleague. He attended uh, the Eurodic and uh, organized two sessions on this. Marcel, the floor is yours, and uh, you have the last word on this first policy question. Uh, thanks a lot, Sandra. As uh, already introduced, my name is Marshall, uh, speaking for the Eurodig. Um, and I just want to add one point uh, to the catalyzation of digitization um, in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we are now able to cooperate on an international level within Europe uh, to fight the pandemic. There is, the, uh, for instance, the Cough Pass app, which allows us um, to um, kind of have an ID that you're vaccinated throughout whole Europe. Every country in the European Union is accepting that certain pass. And this app has been developed in an open source manner considering data protection. And we have several other initiatives within national countries um, to fight the pandemic and to track the people that are actually affected or ill. Um, and I think this is a great success, and this is something we can build on in other terms for other applications too. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Marcel. Now, Olga, I give back to you, and um, I have to tell you, unfortunately, we, uh, we are running out of time with the good aspects of the internet, but let's put it in a positive way. I'm pretty sure the good overweights the bad and possibly the ugly, so that we can save some time on the bad and on the ugly. Um, I can already tell you a first speaker who couldn't raise the hand was uh, Sain, Saina, or what was the name? Sunny West. Sunny West. So, uh, Olga, uh, I hand over to you for the next poll. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandra. And I'm totally optimistic always uh, about technology. So, I'm sure that the positive things about the use of internet in this crisis, where we have much more examples. As, as a summary, I've been taking some notes. The positive aspects of e-commerce, digital identity, the, the comment from Italy and the comment from our colleague from United, the European Union, very interesting about the idea for vaccination using open open source. Uh, E-learning, everyone mentioned the benefits of, of learning remotely in telework and uh, capacity building activities. So many, many good things. Thanks to the internet. I, 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 I cannot think what could have been this pandemic without the internet. So imagine, not being able to work, not being able to, to buy or to sell goods. And so um, many industries were impacted, but many others could run uh, equally uh, with, with their businesses. So uh, let's focus now on the bad, not, not so bad, not ugly, but the bad. So we have some uh, some hands up. I have um, a little bit of you. Uh, Taniwe, um, are you... Um, Somewhere I have you up in the in the list because uh, Sandra told me to put you. Uh, can can you speak up, up now? And I will build the, the queue with other colleagues. Anyway, are you there? Um, I'm here. So okay. if <laughs> I'm here, thank you I, so much. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I can see you. I can see you. Thank you. Um, technology. I was struggling with the button. Um, so my name is Zanyue Ntatisi Asare, and I am the chairperson of the South African Internet Governance Forum. But I think my contribution will specifically look at data protection and the bad. And yes, it won't be that bad. So I think we've had really good examples of contact tracing and the development of applications. And I'll look at this from an Africa perspective. Um, with the, you know, the the, the uh, accelerated use of contact tracing apps, we're looking at a lot of data processing. And when we look at the um, uh, Africa as a continent, just uh, about 50% of the countries in Africa have actual data protection laws. So really the bad there is exacerbation of human rights violation when it comes to elements of privacy, surveillance, and um, 
you know, just really any other kind of violations that flow from there. I could go on for days, but um, I think just in, in a nutshell is looking at the human rights violations that are related to poor data protection processes. Thank you. Thanks to you, many thanks. And, and now I have a queue. Uh, Abdias Zambrano, you're next. Hello. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Abdias Zambrano y represento al IGF Panamá. Eh, muchas gracias por la oportunidad. Voy a resumir la participación de nosotros el día de hoy en los aspectos. Thank you very much. I'd like to touch upon three issues that we observed in Panama during the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, in 2021, we reported more hacker attacks in Panama. We do not have um, a special implemented strategy that would uh, protect us against such attacks. Secondly, violence against women also surged during the pandemic. Unfortunately, human rights standards are not always adhered to in our country. And finally, many students had no access to remote education because they had no connection to the internet or the quality of the connection was too poor or uh, they did not have the necessary devices. And so many of them actually dropped out and had no access to education whatsoever. One more thing I'd like to touch upon is a new act on remote employment in our country, but that act has not yet been well adjusted to the reality during the times of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let me mention one more thing. During the pandemic, women also had to well do their household chores apart from working remotely. Hello, uh, I'm from Sri Lanka. I'm Nirosha Vedasinghe. I'm representing Internet uh, Society. So we had a lot of good things. So I'm supposed to put the bad things, some small bad things like. So the bad things also reported, such as especially among the youth suicide cases reported due to the uh, action taken by the parent to reduce the internet addiction. It was especially highlight the open discussions conducted by the Internet Society of Sri Lanka. Also, the survey conducted by the Kotelam Defense University researchers also emphasized are addicted to the internet and the games. Uh, and as an initiation to solve this issue, Internet Society conducted productive discussions with mentors, psychologists, counselors, and the respective stakeholders. And also the, during the pandemic, uh, broadband connectivity issues face not only the rural areas, but also some urban areas as well. Students and the teachers are going to top mountains and some students connected to the internet from top of trees. It was very dangerous. Uh, anyway, uh, intermediate actions has already taken to solve the issues with telecommunication and the ICT agency uh, of the uh, country. So thank you. Thank you, Nerosha, especially for respecting the time. Thank you for your comment. Next, I have Narolite. Mm -hmm. Narolite, the floor is yours. Can you hear me? I can see your room. Okay. Um, let's go. Hello. Uh, hello. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So, uh, there's an echo. There must be another microphone open there. Oh, there's another microphone open in the same room. So I'm increasing the analyzation process. But uh, currently, the government capitalized on this to make it rather a luxury for using the internet rather than a convenient uh, option where a lot of taxes have been uh, shown to the use of digitalized uh, operations in our country. And a lot of people are being burdened with this uh, inconvenience, such that even kids trying to use internet to assess their project rights and all other stuff, uh, to pay huge amounts of money to be able to assess the internet Thank you. Thank you very much, Narodita. Mohammed, floor is yours. You're next. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, I think to, to, to answer the question about the, what's about uh, best things about the, the internet, in, in, especially in the North Africa, I think it's a lack of in, uh, infrastructure in, in some countries in the region and lack of internet coverage uh, in remote areas and lack of appropriate equipment, especially in case of some vulnerable groups like refugees and regular migrants. Uh, and I, I would like to stress in this issue because I think uh, is this a problem? Uh, it's a common problem with other regions in in, in Africa, especially about uh, it's always refugees and regular migrants is left behind about the, the internet issue, and all of this lead to adverse impact in particular a level of access and connectivity, con uh, connectivity, and consequently most of the children of, for example, for, for of of, children of uh, refugees. Uh, and, uh, and those located in the remote area, uh, remote area uh, uh, depriving from access to the different uh, uh, learning platform. In addition to that, the, the, the low rate of internet uh, penetration in the region left many people behind and decreased the opportunities that uh, uh, appears in, uh, in during the time of COVID-19. Uh, and also, uh, the other issue uh, is bad in, 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 in North Africa, the lack of legal framework and uh, ineffectiveness of existing laws where uh, other reasons that affected using the internet in the region or to be more accurate, uh, it made the using of internet is limited to follow the social media and not to be active on uh, another uh, issues like education and the commercial issue or to access to, to different service or government service uh, uh, online. Uh, and it also is reduce the potentiality of transforming the citizens in the region to be real digital citizen, uh, citizen uh, person. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohammed. I have the following list, and I will call, close the queue now. We have Lucian Osvaldo, Jorge, Laura, Diana, Tanara, Bram, Plantina, Ham, Harimiro, and Amir, and I will close the queue, hoping that the ugly is really, really very short list. So, uh, Lucian, you're, you're next. Lucian, can you hear me? He's hearing. Okay, uh, let's go with Osvaldo. Querido Osvaldo, te escuchamos. Sé que estás allá en Bien, la comisión. He visto tus claro, fotos. Muchas gracias, Olga. Bueno, básicamente, eh, resumiendo, eh, el cambio de modelo de conectividad... Thank you very much, Olga. Speaking of the changes pertaining to the connectivity model, well, I'm sure that has impacted our society significantly. When we work from an office, we have access to the internet, but then we go back home, and at home, we are not necessarily connected to the internet. And so government agencies um, had to focus on more efficient protection against hacker attacks, and uh, government uh, agencies had to be empowered in order to protect the users against uh, such attacks. But many users lost uh, their confidence in digital applications and in the internet as a whole. So I suppose we need to uh, create new uh, capacities so that uh, the users can benefit from the opportunities that the internet brings along. Finally, I'd like to touch upon the hacker attacks during the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of harmful applications uh, were launched, a lot of uh, viruses were released, and lots of entities became uh, objects of attack. On top of that, there were frequent situations where public institutions had to pay large sums of money. I uh, represent the IGF Forum in Spain. What I'd like to say is that, well, we in Spain, we often believe that our 
uh, internet coverage is brilliant, even better than in Germany or other developed countries. But something interesting happened. Namely, in uh, Spain, there's a number of uh, rather small towns where the speed of uh, the internet is uh, uh, lower than desired. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, what turned out was that in those uh, smaller towns, often the speed of uh, the internet uh, accelerated significantly. So over there, on the other hand, uh, in those areas where the speed of the internet uh, was uh, high, uh, there was economic growth, and where nothing changed with respect to the speed of the internet, those positive changes were not observed. And so what is really important is to be connected to high quality internet. Um, the, the, the speed of the internet has to be sufficient for the smaller towns to be able to catch up with the positive um, results of the digital transformation. So what we can now see uh, with respect to the fiber optic technology is that there are these huge differences in between the regions depending on the speed of the internet. So there is a difference between those uh, towns or cities that have access to high speed internet and those that don't. This is a very in important observation from Spain. Thank you. Laura, over to you. And then Lucien. As I've said before, we have uh, made a number of analyses with respect to technology, and digital platforms were really important for people to maintain social contacts, especially in Colombia. It was something very important. What we observed in Colombia was that the internet had an impact on social mobility, and there were areas in Colombia where due to the high internet traffic, the servers were down completely. And whenever that happened, that resulted in a lack of confidence of the end users uh, in digital platforms. And at the same time, the end users really wanted to maintain their basic rights, including the right to the freedom of speech. Now in English. Bonjour à toutes et à tous, chers collègues. La crise sanitaire a été un révélateur. Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 crisis highlighted the fact that the internet has some negative aspects as well, even though it often turns out to be a panacea. Uh, there are uh, lots of internet uh, users in Rome, but uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, made us realize how vulnerable we are when we do not have access to the internet. It's important to combat disinformation. Disinformation is one of the banes of the contemporary society, and the internet is only a reflection of the contemporary society. It is only a reflection of the evil that people uh, do. Uh, the need for digital transformation is immense, and especially the need for digital transformation of SMEs. But the internet users need to have confidence in this cyberspace. And that's all on my part. Thank you. Can you hear us, Yena? Hi, um, this is Jenna speaking. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes. All right, great, thank you. So this is Jenna Fung from, um, from the Asia Pacific Youth IGF. So a few things I want to bring up because this year 
in in September, we have also have some discussions on the privacy issues and the sustainability in all those areas. And also earlier yesterday, earlier this week, we also had a workshop about the paradox of virus contact tracing app. So apparently we have some concerns over surveillance and privacy on this meta. Um, few, few things that we, we have brought up from the discussion in both the workshop and also the youth Asia back in earlier this year in Asia Pacific was that uh, surveillance over everywhere, not only on the tracing app, but also on social media also, um, as people may have to also concern more about the rising power of the government and also the big tech. So these are basically things we have to put more concerns over, especially some examples happening in Hong Kong also that social media platform like Instagram or Facebook are censoring content based on certain guidelines on their community guideline, which is not very clear and transparent at the moment. And that's the thing identify that we have to be careful. And from the workshop, Speakers and participants identify that we have to make our internet a technology more inclusive, especially in this crit um in, in this critical time during the pandemic when we are more depending on technology and internet. We should make it inclusive and when government deciding on making some policies, especially using vaccine passport or contact tracing app, they had they should not like like black people might not have access to device or internet, which make it hard for them to to um, to make it up to use this technology. So these are basically the things I would like to raise, and of course, let alone some other in you know problems that that is very common in Asia Pacific, which is the internet access, because now mostly people are still working remotely or having their you know classes remotely, and so I think these are the major issues that we are facing in Asia Pacific. And I would like to bring this up here so we can also take it into consideration when we try to close the gap uh, in solving this internet governance issue in all the regions in this world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenna. I have Bram next. Bram, the floor is yours. Bram, can you hear me? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, okay, I can hear you. Bram from Malawi, um, IGF, not to be confused by Mal Mali. Um, I have four points that I'd like uh, to, to, to raise. And so number one is that there were a high number of online financial crimes, but also sexual harassment. And then we also saw marginalized citizens not having access to the internet due to the higher cost of the um, data within the region, but also contributed through um, the issues of digital literacy um, in African continent. Number three, exposed, um, so this also exposed the need for local content, and then um, also the need to draft um, the legislations that ensure the protection and safety uh, of the citizens within the continent. And the last bit, bit is um, that this also has exposed the unpreparedness of the governments um, in trying to deliver services to citizens using the e-government portals, but also policies and strategies that support um, this kind of initiative. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, and thanks for respecting the time, Bram. Plantina, you're next. Thank you. Um, I think one of the key challenges that we've also uh, particularly recognized in South Africa is that as online, um, as young people are moving onto a digital platform, online safety is also changing. Um, in addition to young people using uh, online services or social media platforms for learning, they're also using it for personal use and are equally violating each other on those platforms. So we've seen an increase in the number of online bullying which have led to suicide. Um, and we've also increased, well, excuse me, we've also seen an increase in the number of young people, particularly in marginalized communities, displaying inappropriate pictures of their colleagues or fellow young people on um, social media platforms. This was also uh, particularly due to a lack of knowledge of that being a, a, a violation or human rights violation of some sort. So we've also seen that um, 
gap, lack of knowledge amongst young people as they move, as they use the internet and digital platforms, them offending each other on those platforms. Thank you. Thanks to you, Plantina. This is somehow in between ugly and the bad. Yeah. But we, we will go to that in a moment. I have Harimino next. Harimino, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Donc, euh, je vais passer en français. Bonsoir, euh, bon après-midi à tous. Euh, je suis Armin Rakunjenbe. Je suis la coordinatrice de IGF Madagascar. Donc, euh, I am a coordinator, an IGF coordinator from Madagascar. And I would not like to dwell well, too much on the bad aspects of the internet. But I'd like to refer back to what the previous panelists said, namely, there is unequal access to the internet. And for the developing countries, just like ours, that issue of the lack of access to internet is especially alarming. And so during the COVID-19 pandemic, schools were closed down. So there was no access to education uh, with the exception of private schools. Private schools continued their operation during a lockdown because they did have access to the internet. They had access to computers as well. Speaking of remote uh, employment, working uh, from home, well, many people uh, had to work from home, but many people also lost their jobs because they did not have the sufficient resources and they did not have the sufficient digital skills. We have also observed that as of today, the internet has become a place of uh, scams and all sorts of uh, problems as well. Unfortunately, Many people use the internet uh, in order to steal and pr conduct other crimes. Amir, can you hear me? Okay, once Amir finds his uh, microphone, uh, Yao, you're the last, and then Amir. Amir, you're there? Yes, yes, Yao. I'm here. Oh, Amir, go ahead. I, I didn't see you. Go ahead, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me yes, well? I, we can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, thank, uh, hello, everyone, and uh, distinguished panelists. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair, for giving me the floor. Uh, internet uh, in COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, excuse me. First of all, uh, I'm uh, Amir Mukabir from uh, Iranian academic community. Uh, in, internet and COVID-19 uh, pandemic have both positive and negative aspect for us. Uh, one of the ugly aspects was negative effects of digital sanctions on some nations that have become intensive and more destructive, especially during COVID-19 pandemic and other emergencies. I hope this vital issue will be reflected in IGF 2021 output. These digital sanctions on many areas like on investment in ICT infrastructures, technology, digital services, digital licenses, uh, digital resources like IP, IPs, DNS system, and access to some networks are, are key barrier and obstacle in achieving national development goals using ICTs. Uh, we believe these digital restric restrictive measures constitute human right violation in internet and cyberspace, especially right to development, right to education, right to business, and so on. Some of our universities have problem to access to some scientific database and some Iranian digital businesses and applications has, uh, uh, has been removed from digital stores like Google Play and Apple Store uh, with pretext of sanctions of their res respective government. Uh, uh, my suggestion is that non-discriminatory access to ICTs and cyberspace especially in the field of capacity building for all nations, 
should be a new norm for having inclusive internet. Uh, thank you very much indeed for giving me the opportunity to share uh, our common concern. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Amir. Thank you for your comments. And Yao, you're the last in this section of the of this session. Yao, the floor is yours. Okay. So my is uh, uh, sometimes you get you get this now. Get on your phone. Pop up adverts from nowhere. Sometimes it depends on the app that you are using. But sometimes you don't even have to install those apps. Then those pop up will be coming. You don't know where they are from. When you call your telephone service to from them, they will tell you that you may subscribe to those services. And sometimes you don't do those subscriptions. They just come automatically on your phone. Those are my challenges with the internet. Thank you very much, Yao. Uh, so this is the final part of this bad uh, section. I would summarize that the bad things that were mentioned in general were problems with regulations about privacy, security, and also different uh, experiences with access and local content. I have a request from the floor from one of our uh, moderators, uh, Muriel. Muriel, you want to say something? Yes. Um... Uh, I don't know if, okay. Okay. Um, je vais y aller en français. Je m'appelle Muriel Abini et je représente le Bénin IDF. Um, nous avons discuté, mais nous avons oublié qu'Internet n'est qu'un outil avec des entreprises qui fournissent... I think we are forgetting that the Internet is a tool and those tools and services are provided by companies. So we should focus on the behavior of online users. So the internet is a tool only. So it's not, but it's not the internet that is responsible for the bad things that are happening. It's us, the users, who are responsible for what's happening online. And that's why we organized trading courses and awareness building sessions in order to open people's eyes to this issue. Very often there are platforms out there, there are apps that are governed by specific rules because they are tools for users, but the users have to make sure that they themselves respect their privacy. Uh, Sandra, over to you about the ugly things. Thank you, Olga, and thank you, everyone. And um, it's amazing to see how rich the debate is uh, from the different regions of the world. We have only 20 minutes left, and we have still to cover the ugly part. And uh, we actually wanted also to discuss in an open floor the way forward. I fear, however, that the way forward uh, is not realistic anymore to uh, achieve a discussion about this. Um, let's see how far we get with the part ugly, and possibly it's better if we give the floor then directly to our reporters. And I would encourage the reporters again to also consider what has been said in the chat. A lot of good information uh, was there as well, and that should at least feed into the final report of the session. So I ask everyone who wants to speak on the ugly to raise your hand now. We will make a queue of operation and that queue will be closed after a while. We will not accept any other um, uh, hand after we closed the queue. And I would also encourage the speakers uh, not to repeat what another one has been said. Let's really find out what are the different things uh, in our region and not just repeat what another one has said. So I will start with, um, uh, as it appears on my screen here, and that might not be the order in which you raise the hand. So first is Olga from Ukraine, then Nazar, then Rodney, Mohamed, Roberto, Marcel. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Olga, you, you, Thank you Sandra. Floor, uh, so uh, my name is Olga Kirilyuk. I'm chair of uh, Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance, and uh, I specifically wanted uh, to speak uh, more in this uh, 
ugly discussion part because uh, I think as many things in our lives, uh, it's uh, quite difficult to classify something as uh, in this black and white uh, colors and uh, many actions which have been actually taken by uh, uh, countries in our region in response to COVID-19 can, uh, can be at this borderline between good and bad and that's why we can sometimes uh, refer to them as ugly and I actually wanted to bring uh, one very specific example uh, with uh, the tracking uh, COVID-19 apps because uh, uh, CIDIC uh, has undertaken uh, last year um, separate uh, intersessional project which uh, has, uh, where we gathered uh, the community in order to analyze uh, what has been the practice uh, in various countries across our region and uh, as uh, you probably know the region of southeastern Europe covers uh, 20 countries so we wanted to see how the how the authorities actually replied to to this new challenge and uh, we tried to analyze uh, how this uh, uh, tracking apps uh, actually influencing uh, the human rights, the data protection and the privacy concerns. And uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, with um those but uh, the, with the, the best intentions that uh, the governments uh, might have had at the end uh, there was no proper human rights uh, impact assessment and uh, there was no uh, put in place proper monitoring mechanism to see uh, whether those apps have been uh, efficiently at the uh, efficient at the end but uh, what uh, has happened and uh, what is uh, what is a uh, sure thing that uh, uh, there was not always the proper data rights uh, protection uh, uh, safeguards applied and uh, this is uh, what we tried to do. We also drafted uh, recommendations uh, to the public health authorities and the developers of these uh, apps uh, to encourage them to use uh, human rights uh, uh, oriented approach every time they try to design these uh, apps. And uh, um, oh, back to you, Sandra. Thank you, Olga. Um, next is Nazar. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you, Olga. And uh, one of the things that uh, was ugly about the internet is that um, when uh, the schools were, you know, uh, closed because of the pandemic, internet was nowhere to come to the aid uh, of the students. So the learning stopped. Um, teachers could not communicate with uh, kids to give them material to study. So I think. Um, the ugly thing was the, uh, you know, the internet could not come to the aid of the uh, students and teachers that at the 11th hour. And also there was uh, zero uh, violation of uh, privacy and data and personal data because, uh, you know, the, if you take your data, you don't know where this data is going, who is doing, who is uh, being given that data. So I think uh, that th those two uh, constitute the, uh, the ugliness of the uh, internet. Thank you. Thank you, Nazar. Then we have Rodney. Thank you very much, uh, Rodney Taylor. Caribbean Telecommunications Union. Uh, from my perspective, the pandemic has shown that global inequalities, inequalities continue, in particular in relation to internet infrastructure, digital skills, devices. So the rich versus the poor countries, developed versus developing countries. And we have to ensure that there's meaningful connectivity where it matters the most. Uh, small island developing states and underserved regions and groups. This is the perspective that I bring. Uh, we should set ambitious targets and make a global effort to address these inequalities and make sure that we make significant pro progress in the next five to 10 years in line with the UN SDGs. The metaverse is being touted as the next big thing or the next evolution of the internet. And will it broaden the digital divide as developed countries already corner the markets for digital goods and services and financial technology? Or will they make a, a real effort to ensure that the technology delivers more benefits where those benefits are needed the most? Uh, the internet has to lead to a better world, but it will not unless you make a collective effort to make it so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rodney. And then let's continue with Mohammed. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think the, the, the letterness itself is not agree, but I think the, the attempts of governments to control and the censor the, 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 the human uh, rights and the uh, transaction over the uh, internet is the thing. 
uh, is in terms of fisheries rights in, in the in the North Africa uh, region, and that goes to uh, that the security information about the situation of Corona, for example, is considered as national security question. Uh, uh, the region with many, many violations of digital rights, particularly the right to privacy, and with the increasing in uh, surveillance practice. As a result, human rights activists and journalists, students, uh, doctors, lawyers, and even if the, the normal uh, uh, citizens who criticize the, the taking preventive measures by the government had interrogated uh, for uh, circulate the fake news. So the, now the, the right to, to, to full freedom of uh, expression and opinion is, is considered in, the, in North Africa as, as fake news. Uh, and all, this was directly violated the freedom of expression and the right to criticize. And this was this case is not is happening in, in the region in Egypt, in Algeria, in Morocco, and Tunisia. And also the last thing I would like to, uh, to, to stress also, uh, uh, the, the surveillance, surveillance practices and uh, monitor and censor the inter, uh, internet and uh, and censor the, the human rights uh, uh, or the person activities in the internet can also affect the, some vulnerable groups like uh, refugees. And if we come uh, to the case of refugees, if the government has taken some 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 action, this can result to deporting this refugee to back to his uh, country of origin, which means that puts this person at risk of, uh, of maybe of this or or detention. Uh, I think this is the most. Of course, it, it, this beside also. And there's some uh, issue related to the data protection and uh, and uh, uh, and other issues. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you very much. And then let's move to Roberto. Thank you very much, Sandra and Olga. Um, it's great to be here with you. I'm, I'm going to switch to Spanish for this time, um, taking advantage of this great uh, translation system. Bueno, la parte fea. Considero que ha sido the ugly aspects of the internet. We spent almost two years on lockdown. We lived in isolation as individuals and as societies, while at the same time we were trying to make sense of the situation. We were trying to envisage life after the pandemic. So that is one point I wanted to raise. Another point is the fact that we were unable to communicate as efficiently as we are able to do that, for example, right now. The pandemic is still here, but the situation has improved. There have been a lot of uh, novel ideas that help us to make our lives as normal as possible. So the internet has become one of our major allies. So that is a positive thing. However, as we have repeatedly emphasized here, not everyone has stable access to the internet, and that's something that we must come to terms with. In terms of the ugly aspects of uh, the internet, let me tell you that I am delighted to be able to be here and share our experience with you. And I'd like to really think about how the internet has helped us through the pandemic. I think we should keep up the good work. We should continue talking and exchanging thoughts and experience. We can see that everyone has similar experiences in Africa, in Europe, in America. So it's very important to compare um, our experiences so that we can draw inspiration from different countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roberto, and I very much agree with you that we somehow have to continue on all the ideas and uh, information that we get today. Um, Marcel, you are next, and then Zaina, and then we finish and wrap up this third policy question on the ugly. Marcel, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks a lot, Sandra. As I mentioned, the Marcel from the Euridic. Uh, I want to add something to uh, Rodney Taylor's point uh, about developing countries and uh, economic weaker countries. Uh, countries. The COVID-19 pandemic uh, has put uh, significant uh, pressure on all the all countries, uh, but especially on the, the weaker ones. They are suffering the most. Um, so on the one hand, they have less monetary resources to support the companies and organizations within their own country. But on the other hand, they suffer from a rapidly growing shortage of skilled workers. Um, as we learned during the Eurodec, 
uh, from the Albanian Manufacturing Union, among others. Um, in the economically weaker countries, the uh, qualified workforce often mitigates uh, to economically stronger countries for various reasons, which increases the shortage of workers there and endangers economic success in the long term. And the kind of vicious circle begins or intensifies, which in the long term can become dangerous for the society in the respective countries. So we need to create new initiatives and support existing ones to digitally train job seekers in economically weaker countries and create incentives um, to stay within their countries and to support those. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcel. And the last one in our queue was Sena. And I said earlier the queue was closed, so it would be unfair if we allow more speakers now. Sena, you would be the last. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Zena Buhat from the Lebanese IGF. My intervention would be about other type of crisis affecting very badly the internet. And uh, I would like to switch to Arabic, please. كل من زار لبنان يدرك أن هناك مشكلة كبيرة تتمثل بالانقطاع اليومي للكهرباء وبسبب عجز مؤسسة. If you know anything about Lebanon, you will know that um, blackouts are a major problem. بسبب عجز مؤسسة كهرباء لبنان عن توفير الطاقة تغطي تغطي مولدات الديزل هذا العجز. It often happens that people have no access to power. There are problems with that. Sometimes the only thing people can use are generators that require fuel, and fuel is very much expen very expensive in many cases, and this has a very negative impact on access to even the most basic products, and it also has an, an adverse effect on access to internet. This is also a threat to in the stability of internet. So power shortages and blackouts in Lebanon are a nationwide problem. Big companies are monopolists. And that's why in Lebanon, we can see that access to the internet has been limited due to economic problem and shortage of resources. There are also other problems that we should be aware of related to the scarcity of spare parts and limited access to quality internet infrastructure, and that is something that hampers the development of uh, stable internet access. So the infrastructure we have in place is not sufficient. There are other problems in Lebanon as well. And these include a shortage of qualified human resources, people who would be able to work in a hybrid model. It is very difficult for people to adapt and to start working remotely. They simply do not have the skills to do so. And that is a major problem that we can see in the public sphere, both in the private and in the public sector. So the only positive aspect is the fact that we are doing our utmost to build awareness, uh, build awareness of how important access to alternative energy sources is. That is something that our country can be hopeful about. Thank you very much, Saina. And uh, thank you very much, everyone who had the chance to speak, and even more to those who shared their thoughts with us in the chat. We have only three minutes left, and Olga and I were chatting how we can best accommodate, first of all, our agenda, but at the other hand, still ending in time. And Olga, um, we agreed to have a suggestion for the room. Would you like to um, tell us about this suggestion? 
Sorry, I couldn't hear you, Sandra. You were giving the floor to me. Um, the suggestion we we exchange. Oh yeah, yeah. How we are okay. going to yeah, move I forward. Think this is a very rich uh, exchange of ideas and suggestions. We move forward our discussion over in in, in, in processional work. Sorry, I, did, I I I couldn't hear your your last part of the comments. So apologies for that. And uh, yes, let's follow the, the dialogue. I think this is this is a process. That's not it's not the end of the dialogue. This should be taken into in, an intersessional um, uh, activities that we have, which is very active. And I would say that the ugly somehow. Is, is linked to the good. You see, access access to content when it's not, it's ugly. When it's good, it's fantastic. So I think that that's a, that's a remarkable thing. Um, we should give the floor to our rapporteurs to make summary now. Uh, Judith, uh, or uh, who, who, who was the rapporteur as well? Hello. Hey. Can Hello. You, Are you can, there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. All right. You. Great. This is Judith Hellstein. Rapporteur of, along with Muriel. So what we have found and what the summary is, is that, uh, is that the good is in, in enabling digital transformation and enabling governments to digitalize services and bring things more to, pe to the people. Um, the bad is that, is that because of the lockdowns, there were a lot of schools that could not function, and kids did not learn for months and months at a time. Um, and that was the bad part. And then the ugly part, and then the ugly part was that, and then the ugly part was that, um, that there's a lot of bullying and hacking and um, the rising in suicide rates and the, and people who are thinking that their life is over because they've been displayed all over the internet. Um, so we just that that uh, I think that highlights uh, a lot of the good, the bad, and the ugly is that the rise in e-commerce and digitalization and bringing more services to the people, but also you have the hacking and then you have the cyberbullying. Thank you, Judith. Thank you very much. So I think we are. At yes. the end of the session. Olga, we are you. indeed ending in time. And um, I think Anya should be the one finalizing the session. But I would like to yeah. summarize that um, I would encourage uh, everyone to make a copy of the chat, or in particular the rapporteurs, to take into account what has been shared in the chat and make that part of the final report for the session. And also what has been in the chat is basically uh, the working basis for our way forward. And I really suggest uh, to transform this rich session into something that uh, keeps us uh, together for a while and to discuss and come maybe up with policy questions. I think Anya, our coordinator, will have some uh, good ideas with this as well. And everyone uh, who shared ideas here should also subscribe to the NRI mailing list because this is where the discussion is going to be held. Mm -hmm. And I'm very much looking forward to continue on this topic with all of you. And Anya, uh, back to you in the room to close the session. Excuse me. Is Dr. Anya Lott? not in the room? Yes, Anya is here. It's such a big room. It takes time to come from the first row to the podium. <laughs> Huge thank you to Sandra and Olga. It wasn't at all an easy task, and I think you did an excellent job. Maybe an applause for Sandra and Olga. For our rapporteurs as well, Judith, Muriel, uh, Ali, thank you very much. Uh, such a challenging task in front of you, but we're looking forward to read your report. As Sandra said, it seems that there will be a number of action points which will uh, probably inform and maybe navigate our work plan, I mean the work plan of the NRIs for next year. We will do a debrief over the end of this year and from there we will understand what will be our next uh, adventure in 2022. Thank you very much once again, I really enjoyed it. Thank you to all the speakers, you were excellent. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I hope I can see you in person in the near future. Yes, indeed. <laughs>